Okay, in this video tutorial we're going to talk um, just quickly about uh, pressure potential and how it applies to plant cells. Um, so if we just have a quick look at this um, diagram here, um, it's just explaining a, a sort of an important idea. So if we've got pure water here, that has, remember, we would say on this side, it has a water potential of, so draw that, it has a water potential of zero. Pure water has a water potential of zero. Now on this side, you could think of it as the water potential of pure water is zero, um, but we've added some solutes. So maybe the solute potential here is uh, negative one. And you can see that down the bottom. And we'll, we'll talk about this when I kind of summarize it. So the solute potential is negative one, um, or 1.0. Uh, so if we, uh, th this means that because we've added solutes, the solute potential is, is always negative. Uh, the water potential in this case uh, would be the same, would also be negative 1. So is there any way to actually increase water potential? Adding solutes, solute potential is always a negative value, so it, it reduces the overall water potential. Is there a way that we can increase the water potential? Well, what we can do is apply a physical pressure. So in this instance, um, water would normally move from here where it's pure, where it's, it's pure, so we have the highest water potential or water concentration, to an area here because of all these solutes. We've got a lower concentration of water or a lower water potential. But if I use a plunger and apply a physical force, if I literally push down on the water on this side, as I push down, the only thing that can move across this membrane in the middle is the water. So I could, if I push hard enough, I can actually push down to actually apply, uh, apply a physical pressure to push the water through to this side. And that's actually a, a, something that uh, can be used to actually filter um, or, or to purify water, and it's called reverse osmosis. So if you have a special type of, of capillary kind of tubing where you've got a, a, a semi-permeable or a partially permeable membrane, um, so a membrane with small pores in it, you can apply a physical pressure. You can push down on one side and the, the solute molecules are all trapped because they can't cross the membrane and you can literally push the water through and get pure water. So that's one way, for instance, you could get pure water from, say, like salt water or um, essentially purify water out of, out of a solution. So in this instance, imagine for a moment, in this instance, water would normally move from this side, where we've got a water potential of zero, and because we've added solute to the side, the water potential, or the concentration of water, is lower, so uh, the solute potential is negative one. Um, that means that the water potential at this stage would be negative one. But what if I apply a physical force, uh, a physical, literally pushing down on that plunger, of one? Um, now, pressure, um, so if you do physics, for instance, is, is measured as um, either kilopascals. Here, for some reason, they've used megapascals. So the, the, the standard unit, I think, is kPa, kilopascals. Um, should be a small k. Uh, kilopascals. Um, so the standard unit for pressure is, is kilopascals. Um, so if I apply a, a, a force down there, um, that, that produces a pressure of, of one kilopascal, I could counteract the effect of this, uh, these solutes. So we call this pressure potential. And we just draw the same little trident symbol. I think it's called psi. Um, the pressure, if I apply a pressure of one, I essentially counteract the effect of those solutes. So the, in this case, the overall water potential the overall water potential would actually be zero. So in this case, we would now have a water potential of zero on this side and a water potential of zero on this side. So if I push even harder, if I apply a pressure of two kilopascals, let's say, um, uh, so if I apply a pressure of two in this instance, then the overall water pressure uh, water potential, sorry, the overall water potential in this case, 
would be 1. So um, in theory, you could even actually get a positive water potential um, through providing that, that pressure, um, although I guess it, would, it might be referred to just as a, as a pressure potential. Um, so that's how reverse osmosis would work, is by applying a greater uh, physical pressure, a pressure potential, than the solute potential. So you overcome, you actually increase the, the overall water potential on this side. Um, so water potentials, if we're not talking about a physical pressure being applied, um, tend to, you know, water potentials tend to be zero for pure water. Um, so I guess uh, this is the one instance where, this is the one case where solute potential and water potential aren't the same thing or won't have the same value. Because in this case, essentially, the water potential um, is a combination of the solute potential, which is always negative, plus the pressure potential, which is always positive. So you've got a factor in both of them. So if we're talking about it, just a beaker of water on the table and we add some salt, well, whatever the solute potential is, if it's negative 0.4, then my water potential is going to be negative 0.4. But if we've got um, a, a semi-permeable membrane and we're applying a pressure, um, a pressure potential, that will uh, um, act to increase, it'll have a positive effect um, on the, the water potential. Um, so in this case, if we've got a, a solute potential of negative 1 and a pr pressure potential of positive 1, well, we still get a water potential of 0, even though there are some solutes in there. So water potential... Is, is essentially the value, the overall water potential, um, which is essentially, remember that water potential is the potential for water to, to move uh, from that area. The overall water potential is basically a combination of, made up of pressure potential and solute potential. So the overall water potential is a combination of those two things. Now remember, in a lot of instances when we're talking especially about animal cells, um, pressure potential doesn't come into play, which means that basically the water potential is the solute potential. But technically, we should always be looking at the overall water potential is a combination of the pressure potential and solute potential. Solute potential always being negative and pressure potential always being positive. So I hope that helps to make it a little bit clearer too. Um, but I guess the, the really important thing here is that, that this, is, this has a real application to plants. So the, the movement of water by osmosis can be prevented by applying a pressure, which is called pressure potential. Um, increasing the pressure actually increases the water potential. So unlike solute potentials, which are always negative, pressure potentials are always positive. And it's the combination of the two that gives you your overall water potential. So why is this so important to, to plant cells? Sorry, let me find my slide. Um, essentially because as water diffuses into a plant, as water diffuses into a plant cell, um, the protoplast, the living part of the cell, so the membrane and all the stuff inside it, um, starts to push against the cell wall. Um, and so as it pushes against the cell wall, pressure inside, inside the cell, the pressure of the water pushing on the outside, builds up. Um, and so what this means is that if you place a plant cell in pure water, let's pretend we place a plant cell of pure in pure water, we might have a water potential of zero outside the plant. Um, now, inside the plant cell, let's pretend we have a solute potential of negative 0 0.4. And again, the unit would be like kilopascals, and, and I'm just making these values up. But let's pretend we've got a, a, water, a water potential of 0 outside the cell, pure water. And we've got a solute potential of point, uh, negative uh, 0.4 inside the cell. So out here we've got pure water, and here the solute potential tells us we've got some solutes dissolved in there. So this is a hypotonic solution. Hypotonic, less solutes out here than inside the cell. So water's going to flow in. We've got a higher water potential, zero is higher than negative 0.4. Water is going to flow into the cell. 
but as it does so, the pressure potential inside the cell is going to increase. So the pressure potential in here, maybe after a while, will become 0 0.2. And so in this case, as the pressure increases inside the cell, uh, the overall water potential in here would now be negative 0.2. Right? The, so the overall water potential inside the cell is now negative 0.2. So water is going to continue to flow in. So eventually, water is going to keep flowing into the cell until it reaches a point where we've now got a pressure potential of 0.4. So now, the overall water potential inside the cell is also zero. So we've got a water potential of zero outside the cell and a water potential of zero inside the cell because this pressure potential is kind of compensating for the solute potential will mean that we now have reached equilibrium. There'll be no more, no net movement of water in or out. So even though this is a hypotonic solution, because of the, the pressure uh, potential is built up, um, and uh, eventually we'll reach an equilibrium where the pressure potential inside the cell will be equal to that outside the cell. So I hope that makes sense. The solute potential inside means that water will be driven into the cell because this lowers the water potential inside. But as pressure builds up in the cell, as the cell tries to expand and is pushing on that membrane uh, on the cell wall and the cell wall is pushing back, as the pressure inside the cell increases, um, that compensates or increases the water potential inside the cell until we've got the same overall water potential. So in this case, that you know negative four and, and 0.4 is zero, um, as we have outside the cell. Um, and this pressure here, this build-up of pressure here, is what gives the cell what we call turgor pressure. So the, the plant cells become turgid, um, and that's what helps uh, prevent a plant from wilting. Um, so if you've got a flower in a vase, um, if, if water leaves the cells, it wilts. Um, but if you put it sort of in pure water, um, at least for, for a while while it's still living, um, water goes into the cells until this pressure builds up sufficiently, um, and that pressure is what helps keep it um, turgid, keeps it sort of the flower standing up rather than wilting over. Um, so it's really important in plants. In animal cells, the water potential and the solute potential basically the same thing because this pressure potential doesn't come into play. But in plant cells, the overall water potential is a combination of the solute potential, the negative value um, so that the reduction in water potential due to uh, the solutes added uh, plus the, the, the um, pressure potential. So in this case, inside the cell, the overall water potential is zero um, because even though we've got solutes, the pressure is built up inside. Now remember, in an animal cell, this doesn't work because if pressure builds up um, inside, essentially the membrane bursts. So we don't usually see any significant um, build-up of pressure in an animal, uh, in an animal cell because it lacks the cell wall. So, tricky 